Hello and welcome to this special edition of Assembly Calendar. I'm your host, Matt Vischer. We have uh, two guests joining us today. Uh, we have uh, Assemblyman Al Graff, who represents the 5th Assembly District of Suffolk County. Also joining us today at the desk is Assemblyman Joe Giulio, who represents the 148th Assembly District of Cattaraugus, Allegheny, and Steuben Counties. Thank you very much for joining us today. This is a special edition of Assembly Calendar. We're discussing a growing uh, health concern here in New York State and across the country, and that is uh, heroin. And these two uh, members are with us today to discuss uh, uh, efforts to combat that problem across New York. Uh, always a pleasure to see you both. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, we're going to start with you, Mr. Giulio. If we could uh, bring us up to speed in terms of uh, your the um, efforts of, of where you want to go with this at this point. Sure. What happened was is uh, we have identified the problem, and it, in 2014 we passed 11 bills to address the heroin problem. Uh, and over that time, uh, both Al and I have been talking to our leader, Brian Kolb, about what our conference could do to, uh, to uh, take a look at the problem, address the problem, and hopefully uh, come up with some good solutions uh, to help people that are, that are dealing with this scourge. So what we did is uh, we put together a task force that we will be uh, taking for public hearings soon and uh, to identify what we believe to some of the gaps and some of the solutions that we came up with in 2014. Uh, one of those might be, uh, be rehab. We're going to take a real close look at that. We're going to look at the number of beds and stuff like that nature. So what we're going to do is look at the whole system again. And we're going to try to find and identify where there's weaknesses within the system even after we pass those 11 bills uh, in 2014. And when we identify those, uh, we're hoping to come up with very good solutions to, uh, to meet, again, those gaps and those problems so that, um, the, so that the people suffering uh, and their families, we can help and, and get them to a stage where they're, where they're rehabilitated and, and away from the scorch. And we need to make sure that this is, this, is a, this is a problem that's affected the whole state, not just urban areas, but rural areas like I, uh, like I represent, suburban areas like Mr. Graff represents. So we, it's a problem that is new to us. You know, we had heroin problems in the 70s, and we, I think we had them again in the 90s. It's a secular kind of thing. But we have found that this has been worse and more widespread than those that preceded it. So we're trying to identify places that we can help where state agencies could use propping up and could use some of our help if there's new legislation necessary, if it's budget uh, dollars necessary, whatever we can do to try to, uh, try to eradicate this. As I'm in graph, uh, I'm assuming that this will involve bringing in experts uh, in the heroin field, if you will. Well, one of the things we're looking to do here is, is with the forums, the one thing that our conference is very good at is we listen to people. Mm -hmm. And if we identify a problem, and we, Joe and I have been working on this. We're, we're constantly working on this. We've seen a lot of pitfalls as far as rehabilitation, as far as oversight, as far as uh, when people have hit the bottom and they're ready to go into rehab, you know, the availability of beds. So if, if a person is at the point where they're ready to go into rehab right now, they it takes two or three weeks for them to get a bed. By that time, you lost them already. We need to give parents tools and, and loved ones tools in order to help their family members. So there are a lot of things that Joe and I have looked at and a lot of things that what we need is we have a, general, we have a good idea of some of the problems, I believe, that are out there. And we have an idea of how we can fix those problems. But we need to listen to parents who, who their kids are going through this. We need to listen to addicts who have suffered through this. We need to listen to the professionals out there who can give us, you know, I guess we could say we did like an outline, Joe. Right. So we've done a couple of outlines. We know where we want to go. There's an education portion of it. There's a law enforcement part of it. But I think the biggest focus has been on the rehab part of it. You know, where are we falling down here? because this is an epidemic that's hitting everybody. I mean, it's uh, unfortunately, the heroin's cheaper than marijuana. You can get a bag of heroin for $5, okay? And, uh, and, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's not the type of heroin that we're talking about that was widespread in the 70s. It's a different type of, there's a chemical uh, change to the heroin that makes it even more highly addictive. There's an identification of that, and there's also the identification of what they're cutting it with, mm. uh, which is making it deadlier. Um, so that's part of the problem, and and like you know, something McGrath said is we're looking at at all aspects of it. I mean, we, if you you start with enforcement and seeing what's going on there, and then you you move down the chain, 
and we have looked at, at, at those things in one of the places we've identified and as rehab as one of the places where we think there might be a weakness in that chain. So as we attempt to help law enforcement, and you know, one of Al's ideas was, I think it was like we've had before, that a lot of different components aren't talking to each other. Mm. Uh, we, helped, we hope to, uh, you know, if, if that's the problem and we believe that will be one of them, when we identify that from the people that tell us about it, they can tell us where it broke down. So if I tried to talk to Al and it didn't work, I could testify to that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, as, there, as we're listening. And then we can say, okay, what's the best way can I talk to law enforcement if, if they're arresting my child or a loved one? What comes next? And then how do they talk to the courts? And those kind of things. And, and it's the same with the rehab chain. Once they're in rehab, where's the beginning? Where is the, where is the final destination? before we hope that everybody is, you know, has, is recovered. And we know from a lot of things that recovery isn't just the end of the, end of the uh, treatment. It, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. And, and, and we have looked at different ways to try to, we're going to look at different ways to try to help it. And if, if, you know, if you were to tell me that you had a loved one and you got to point B and you didn't know where to go, well, we need to know that so that we can identify and, and put out something that says you can go to this. Mm. And this will be the easy. And if we can get e agencies talking to each other, um, that can help them too. And those those are some of the things we're looking at. Yeah, we're also looking at you know if you're a, if you're a parent, if you're an addict, if you're a recovering addict, right? You have a story to tell. You know, we want to hear that story. We want to hear the pitfalls that you've had on your way to recovery. We want to hear the pitfalls that parents have had trying to get their children into recovery, or or people that are going through recovery right now. What will help them? You know, we want solutions. If you have something that you want to offer us to help guide us and in order to craft something or to make the system better so that it actually works. So if you have a, st you know, say you're a parent out there, you, you're a parent that lost a loved one or mm -hmm. lost your child, all right? You might want to come forward, right, to talk to other parents through this forum to, to impart some experience on them or what they should be looking for of whether their kid is going to be addicted or is addicted. I mean, there's a lot of voices out there that haven't been heard. And we're asking you to please come and educate us, all right. right? We have an idea, but come educate us. Tell us what the pitfalls are. Because these are the people that are out there. These are the people that know the pitfalls. These are the people that know the anguish. We get people coming into our office and saying, you know, I want to help my child. I want to help my... But there's no tools out there. Now, we have some ideas on what tools we can put in place, but we want to run them past people that are out there that are, that are going through this, that are living this, right? And, and they're going to help us to be able to be put in a position where we can help them. Mm. Okay? And I don't know if what you want to add, Joe, but... Well, uh, but some of the things we talked about is, is Al just touched on. There's an age group here. There's an age of under 18 and 16 and 17 where we can help. And then once you get to adulthood and you're not our child per se under our jurisdiction, if you will, for the lack of a better term, what do we do? You're a full-blown adult. I can't make you do something. The courts are going to have to help us do that. And those kind of things. And where was the problem? Where did you feel, where did it start? You know, and then there's, 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 and it gets very complicated. There could be mental health issues in, involved with this. It could be from going to the hospital for something else. You know, you, you, we've heard these stories as individual legislators. Now we want you to come and tell us these stories as we hold these forms and explain to us again where did it, you know, where did you identify the problem? When did, when did you realize that it was so bad? When, what did you turn to? Who did you turn to? Who, you know. And if, if, it wasn't readily, if that information isn't readily available, then we have a problem. And we hope to make that information as a conference readily available, as well as propping up the agencies, in this case state agencies, uh, that need our help to f deal with the problem. And then you've got the other governmental agencies and not-for-profits that are going to need our help, too. So Certainly a multifaceted approach. I mean, a lot of moving parts. We've talked about that often. Yeah. We've always identified a lot of moving parts in this. There's no simple, mm. simple solution. So we, we need, our best ideas come from the public. And like uh, some of the graph, like you said, I mean, prevention is worth an ounce of cure, uh, is the old saying. So if you, can, if you can talk to parents and recognize some of the signs uh, of, of possible addiction uh, would be the first well, Good there, step. there's so many moving parts. Look, we want to hear from you. We right. want to talk to you. We want you to guide us. We're not here to dictate. 
we're here to listen, okay? I mean, I remember there was a TV commercial or, or a radio commercial I was listening to in the car, and one of the things is a parent said, my child, when they were younger, all right, they were in the band, they were an A student, they were the greatest kid forever, and I did not want mm. to interfere in their life. And I didn't want to monitor them. And you know what? Today, I wish I had, because my child's not with me anymore, okay? I mean, these parents that are out there, these parents that are suffering, these parents that are trying to get their kids out, these parents that have lost children, okay? They have a story to tell. They have a message for other parents. They, they can tell us things that, you know, we can only uh, hop hypothesize about, yeah. okay? And I mean, we're hoping that, you know, the professionals will come in here, that the parents will come in here, that the ad, look at, educate us. This is your chance, okay? Help us formulate policies to really help people because families are suffering, okay? People are suffering. I mean, the crime rate, if you look at the crime rate, a lot of the crimes that are being committed, robberies, bank, I've had bank robberies, and they're all related to opioid abuse and stuff. So, you know, as much as we're trying to help, we're calling out to the public to say, come, come talk to us. Mm -hmm. Trust me, we will listen to you. We're not going to dictate to you. We're going to ask you questions. We're going to probe. But we need your help in order to fix this. We're all in this together, every one of us. So come, tell us your story. So with that being said, uh, with this tax force uh, being assembled, uh, any idea in terms of the dates or, or the uh, cities that you, you're going to be uh, uh, traveling to? We are going to regionalize them and, and try to put, uh, put them in. Again, we're going to do Long Island. We'll do New York City. We'll do the Hudson Valley. We'll do the Capital Region. Then we'll head, we'll head north and then west. Uh, that's our plan. Um, and this we, begins uh, when? Probably in September, September. we're okay. looking at to kick it off. Um, the first one will probably be around here in the capital area, but I'm not positive of that yet. And so the plan then is to finish it and then put our report together before session starts um, in January so that we already have that there and we have a blueprint for what we'd like to accomplish. And, and, and then we'll work with our colleagues on both sides of the aisle, obviously, and in the Senate to hopefully get there with, that, with this information. And, and make stronger, you know, if it's a budget, like I said, we did, if we identify it as a budgetary issue that needs help in the, the different agencies that assist and treat these folks, or is it, you know, is it, is it something else that we have to do? Is it another law? Is it, is it an expansion of a current law that would, you know, increase jurisdiction? It said heartbreak is forever, and we've heard, we've all heard the individual stories, and we really would like to to help those that have lost somebody and then to prevent anybody else from from suffering as bad as these folks have suffered. So the, the idea is, again, to, to, to make it a more accessible system, a more successful system, and uh, and that's what we want. We, and we want everybody talking to each other so, God forbid, when, when, when the issue arises in someone's family or to someone as an individual, we're there to... Uh, to help them through again to a to a destination of recovery. So you're just asking folks to to pay attention to be alert uh, of the upcoming dates, right? Uh, of where to find you. And you know what? When we're putting this out here, let say to people: if you know somebody, talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. If you know if you know somebody that would would be able to help us in our endeavor, call our offices. Let us know who they are. Okay, give it and talk to them and see if they're willing to come forward. And uh, I've been out there talking to people now, I know Joe have, to line people up to come to the forums. But, you know, these forums are so critical in, in our ability to put together a package, right, that will actually help this problem. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today, and we'll stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you for joining us for this special edition of Assembly Calendar. Until next time, I'm Ed Fisher.